Hey guys, and welcome to another MDO Compositions tutorial. Um, today we're going to take a look at the scene properties. So let's just open up a new window of Blender. And then make also sure that up here it says Blender Render and not Cycles Render. And then let's just go to the scene properties and let's minimize all the sub tabs we don't need to begin. Okay, now in this first sub tab, which is called Scene, you can actually um, make a few adjustments about what camera renders your scene and you can also set up a background to a kind of or kind of more like an environment so now if we hit F12 you can see it renders the scene exactly as it, as it is perceived by this camera now if we go to top view um, and you must know that you can add several cameras with shift D we can uh, duplicate this camera move it over here rotate it and now if we hit F12, it still renders the exact same scene as before. So in order to uh, get Blender to render this scene according to this camera 0 0.001, we have to select that camera over here. And now if we hit F12, you can see it now renders this scene from a different angle and from a different um, position. Um, this is pretty handy, especially if you have like um, an almost finished scene and you've, you've already set up the perfect camera angle from the perfect position and you don't want to change that you can just add in a second camera and place it wherever you want and then make a test render from another side if you need to um, check something or whatever or in case of my uh, of my car model I just place one camera in the front and one in the back okay so let's just delete the second camera we don't need it and let's take a look at this background feature now, I think background is not quite a perfect expression for this, it's more like an environment. And what you can do, you can select a scene, a different scene than the one you're actually working on, and use that as a background. So in order to do that, we need to create a second scene. So up here you can see scene, so the current scene is called scene. Now, if you press this icon, you can see a list of all the scenes. So with this plus button here, you can actually create a new scene. And let's call it, let's just leave it at scene point zero zero one. And now you can see there's nothing on here. And also you can see all the layers are empty and so on. Now if you go back to our, oh actually let's add something. Let's add a plane. Let's scale it up. Let's add a second plane. The X axis by 90 degrees. Let's scale it up as well. Yeah, something like that. Now we can go back to our first scene and you can see nothing of the, si of the things we just created are visible. So what you can do now is we can, on the background, select this second scene and it is now in here. But as you can notice, you cannot click it, you cannot um, manipulate it in any way. Um, that can be a good thing because it doesn't get in the way. Okay, so right now if you like look at it from here, you can only select the things that are behind it, okay? Of course, um, it is probably more useful to just um, uh, work on those things without this scene enabled, but uh, yeah. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can actually um, link in scenes from other .blend files in order to um, have like a standard environment. So for example, if you want to make a few material tests and you want to make sure that you always render your materials in the exact same environment, you can just create an environment. Then in a separate blend file, you can actually create a scene and then you can just always link in that, um, well, presentation scene, so to say, to uh, get always the exact same environment, okay? Um, and one other thing to note is also that if you go to the second scene and let's say you move this um, plane to the second layer and then you go back to your first scene, you can see um, it does no longer show that plane. If you select the second layer over here as well, you can see it once again shows it. Although if you go to scene.001, um, it disappears again because you can select layers um, in different scenes, you can select different layers. Okay, so now to test what I just mentioned, let's just select our second scene and let's delete it. 
and now once again we just have our first scene with only the objects that are actually in this scene. So don't accidentally delete your scene. And now let's just um, link in um, a different scene from a different blend file. And one thing to notice that with Shift F1, you are in the appending uh, function and with Control Alt O, you are in the linking function. Now, if you append an object from a different scene, um, let's just really quick do that. Let's hit Shift F1. And let's go to Projects, um, Aston Martin, and let's select just any material, doesn't really, uh, any uh, blend file doesn't really matter. Let's select Body New. Let's go to Object, and now let's just select this cube. And now you can see if we go to our. Um, didn't really do much, did it? Then let's select this circle over there. Yeah, here we go. This is um, my car in the beginning stage. And you can see it actually added this in. Now you can edit. Oh, let me just select it. You can edit it. You can change the materials and so on. You can, or you can just delete it. Now with Control alt o with linking, you don't actually um, take the geometry into your scene. You just... Or you do, but you cannot edit it, you cannot do anything. It's just linked and not actually duplicated, so to say. So now let's just go to Projects and let's select, for example, um, my logo. Logo, and then let's just select Scene. Let's add in this scene, and you can see nothing appears. But now you've got this linked scene, and you can see this L indicates that this scene is linked in. And you can see here is the logo. But you can, as I said before, you cannot move it around, you cannot change the material or anything. You cannot really do anything with it. It's just, it's nice to have it as a kind of a background, kind of a, as, as an environment. So let's go to our first scene. And let's, under the scene properties, let's select the scene as our um, background. Now let me just see something. And, and that is, where did it go? active over here oh it kind of doesn't select it does it um, oh the problem probably is that they have the exact same name so let's go to scene and let's we can re okay let's go to the first scene let's rename this to scene underline one enter and now let's select our second scene and you can see this time it worked so keep in mind that the linked scene, even though it has that L as a kind of prefix, you have to re make, make sure they have a different name. So now I can just scale this down and now I've got kind of this background. Um, okay, so that's it for this property. Now active clip is actually something you use, you use when camera or object uh, motion tracking. Um, it's a little bit advanced, so let's skip that for now. But just uh, make sure you remember this. Um, yeah, so let's just yeah let's just leave the other scene in here. It doesn't really matter. Um, okay, now audio. This is also a little bit advanced. Um, in Blender, you can actually assign an audio an audio source, a sound source, to a certain object, and then if that object moves around, it will um, change. And the sound accordingly okay so if it moves towards you it becomes louder if it moves away from you it becomes quieter um, if it moves f towards you at high speed it actually compresses the sound wave so to say so it makes it sound um, more high pitched and then if it moves away from you more low pitched and it it gets you get this effect when for example um, a firefighter truck passes you or something or a police car or whatever you can see Doppler, you can actually change the Doppler effect, influence, so to say, and some other things, but more on that later. Now with units, this is also pretty cool. Here you can actually decide what uh, unit system Blender is supposed to use, if it's supposed to use one at all. And you can make a few cool things. So right now, if you go into edit mode, if we hit the N key to show the properties panel, and if we then select edge length, face, length, face angles, and face area under mesh display. Well, let me just go to um, orthographic view. You can see it displays on the angle between edges 
which is always 90 degrees in this cube, of course, um, the edge length of two blender units and the um, face area of four blender units in square. Now, um, if you change this to metric, you can see all the values stay the same, but this um, M for meter is added. And if you go to Imperial, everything is in displayed in yards and inches. Um, now what you can also change, and that's a bit weird because I don't really get how, why it doesn't work the way I think it should, you can also um, change between degrees and radians, okay? So for those of you who are used to working with the unit cycles, um, it's probably handy to select radians. But, oh boy, it doesn't really change how the angles are displayed. It's still 90 degrees and not because uh, 90 radians would be something completely different. However, if you go to object mode and under rotation, uh, where is it? Over here. If you rotate this cube, you can see it changes the value in, um, in radians instead of degrees. So it works over here, but it doesn't work in here. everything okay and one other thing by the way if you for example select this face let's go to local if you scale it down you can see it changes from yards to inches after some time as because it doesn't really display anything in point see a uh, zero point okay so it actually changes to the next smaller um, unit and um, one other thing, you can also make it display separate u in separate units. So if you check that, we are no longer talking in uh, in yards, one point something yards, but in one yard and one point three feet. Is that is that the correct feet? Right. I'm not really good with the imperial measurement uh, unit system, so let's go to the metric one. Here you can see one meter and thirty point two centimeters. Now, if you scale it down f even further. Uh, that was the wrong like this you can see it changes from oh and by the way it only um always displays two um stages so to say okay now right now we've got meters and centimeters and if it, if i scale it down even further it will change to centimeters and millimeters it it won't display meters and centimeters and millimeters okay and one other thing and that's a bit confusing if you can see here you can scale okay you can scale things up and scale things down um if you scale this up you can see um your object appears to become bigger but that's actually not true because uh let's just scale it up and let's go back to none and you can see it changes back to its original size so what this um value actually does does not it doesn't um one it doesn't scale your object up, but instead it just scales the unit system down. Okay. Um, cool. Now let's just deselect this one. Let's go to none. Let's minimize that and let's go to keying sets. And um, keying sets are um, a new way to organize your keyframes and it's got a few cool features. Um, yeah, so let's just make a short animation. Let's move this cube thing over here. Let's hit I, location. Let the, let's then move it over. Actually, let's go to frame 100. And let's move it over here and hit I, location. And you can see we've got our animation. Okay. Now, let's just undo that. Now, let's add a keying set. And now, once again, let's um, keyframe the location with I. And you can see nothing happens. And up here it gives you an error message. King set failed to insert a keyframe. I think that's what it says. Any keyframes, exactly. So it doesn't work. What you have to do instead, um, you can see as soon as we added this king set, there's a new tab that you can choose or that you can um, minimize or maximize. Down here it's called active king set. And you can see path. And over here you can actually see the attributes that this king set is allowed to manipulate. And right now this king set cannot manipulate any attributes or anything, so if you want to insert a keyframe, there's nothing you can insert because this king set cannot do anything. Okay, basically. Now, the way to add something here is quite simple. 
you just hover over what you want to add, for example, location, and you hit the K key. And then you can see under Active Keying Set, we now have location. So now if I hit I, you can see without asking me what I want to keyframe, it automatically keyframed um, the location. And now let's just move it over there. Uh, let's go to frame 100. Let's move it over there. Let's hit I again. And now you can see if we play back the animation, it does exactly what we want. Um, now, of course, if you want to um, um, manip um, enter the keyframe for the rotation, you have to hover over the rotation, add a second attribute or second path to this king set. And now you can also just, let's go over here, let's rotate it around, let's hit I. And you can see successfully added six keyframes now. Let's go to frame 80, let's rotate it to, somewhat, to some other value, I. And now you can see it actually um, rotates your cube the way you want. Now, of course, this was only a very brief um, overview on how to use the king sets, but yeah, now you know what they're all about. You can also add a second keyframe, by the way, and uh, um, for example, add, add another value here, for example, um, the scale value. And now, when this king set is active, you can only add location and rotation, and if this king set is active, you can only add scale values to your um, as keyframes. Um, okay, so let's delete the two, and let's also um, let me just see, delete most of those other things, including this lamp. Okay, now let's just also delete this camera. Let me just see. Actually, let's leave this one. Okay, you can see all those annoying things from the other scene. So let's just delete this linked scene. And now we've got a clean scene. Okay, so now let's just add a cube. A cube. And let's minimize this and let's maximize the gravity. Okay, now in order to, this, to um, show you what gravity is, we need to set up a particle system or that's at least the easiest way I know. So let's just real quick do that. Let's go to the Particles tab over here. And I know we did not we did not yet cover that, but we will soon enough. Let's add the plus sign, and that's all we have to do. Okay, actually, minimize it a little bit. And now if we hit play over here, you can see your cube starts to emit particles. And you can see they fall down according to gravity. Now, since this is not the real world, we can manipulate that however we want. We can, for example, say um, the gravity is not just 9.81, but 100. And now you can see, actually, <laughs> I was, should have typed in minus 100. And now you can see they fall down pretty quickly. But maybe, you know, maybe let's just set it back to about 10. Maybe you don't want want them to um, fall just into this direction. Maybe you want to um, have them fall upwards, or maybe you want to want them to float, just float around in space. Or maybe you want to to um, want them to fall into this direction. Or you can do whatever you want. You can also combine things. You can say ten, ten, ten. And now um, they fall into this direction, and so on and so forth. Or you can just uncheck gravity, which is equal to just um, putting in zeros into every value, uh, into every um, axis. Um, now that's already it, so let's just delete this particle system once again. And then let's talk about simplify. And this is very cool. Um, the problem here is that it only does things we do not yet know about, ex except for skip quarter triangles. But I will still try to show you as, well, as, as good as I can. Um, let's add a subdivision surface under the modifiers. We did not yet cover that as mentioned, but we will soon enough. So let's just set this up to, let's say, five, five subdivisions, okay? Looks fairly smooth. 
Now the second thing we do, I can I won't show you all of the features, but you will know about them soon enough anyway. Let's also um, set up a particle system again, but let's change it from meter to hair. And you can see our uh, our sphere uh, or cube that is subdivided quite often, which now looks like a sphere, um, got hair. And um, yeah, let's leave it at that for now. And right now you can see, oh, by the way, under particles, we also have to um, make, go to this um, children's tab and let's just check simple and let's set this back to 10. Okay, now what did this did, um, we have 1000 hair particles, okay, they are emitted from this sphere. And now under children, we just say, okay, every particle gets 10 kids, so to say 10 children. Um, and therefore, this is easier on your computer instead of just um, making your computer simulate 10,000 particles, okay. But anyway, now we go to the simplify. And let's just check this. You can see at first nothing happens. And that is because what this does, it just limits all those settings in your whole scene, okay. So let's say for your final render, we want this cube to have, um, how many do we make? We want it to have five, sub five subdivisions, and you want those particles, each, you want to have each, you want each particle to have 10 children. Um, then you can just go to this um, scene prop to the scene properties, and you can just change those values, and all the values in your scene that are the same will also be changed. So you can say subdivisions, a max for now a maximum of two is allowed. And you can see, um, actually we cannot see because of the particle system. So let's just go to the modifiers panel. Let's just um, make them disappear for now. You can see it's now less smooth than before. Okay, because this does not change the amount of subdivisions you set in the modifiers panel but just the ones that are actually used. And now if you render this uh, with, with F12, you can see it is displayed with only those two subdivisions. And now if we say, okay, um, let's unhide the particles. For now, we just um, won't allow more than zero child particles. You can see they disappear as well. And this is just a way to um, make your preview renders quicker or to make your viewport quicker or to do whatever you want without having to actually go through all the tabs adjusting all all the settings okay and yeah this is ambient occlusion and subsurface scattering child particles shadow samples if you use smooth shadows and subdivisions from the subdivision surface now the last thing I'd like to explain to you is what is skip quad to triangle because AO and SSS you will automatically know what this is as soon as we cover that in the world properties. So let's just delete this particle system. Let's um, put that back to six where it was and this back to one just so it is as it was before. And now let's just also delete this subsurface or subdivision surface. And now let's go to edit mode and let's just um, drag out this corner like this, okay? And now you can see this is actually like um, one triangle over here and one triangle over here, the way it looks. You cannot see that because it is not shaded, but that's actually how it is. Now if you go to zero and you render this, um, we need a lamp, shift A mesh uh, lamp point okay now if we go to f12 you can see what is that just seeing we have another scene now we only have this scene let's just delete those additional um Oh, here we go. Let's just delete this and also this. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, if we render this, you can see um, it is actually triangulated, okay? In a different way 
then it just looked then it just appeared before so that's what blender does it triangulates those um those faces now that takes some time of course with such a simple object this isn't really important but if you have like a big object with lots of triangles or q uh, with lots of quads that have to be triangulated it takes a lot of time so you can just skip quad triangles now if you go to zero hit f12 you can see it just renders it as um well as one face basically yeah cool now that is a simplify option and that is basically it for the um for the scene properties now, as always, if you have any questions or uh, if you have any comments or any ideas on how I could improve, please post it in the comments below each video, either on my website, amadeocompositions.com or on YouTube. Um, yeah, and by all means, if you want to um, get information about my new videos, just uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And um, yeah, I hope you liked it. I hope you've learned something. Thank you for watching and see you next time.